Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Spellbinder doing another video on uh, astrophotography. I went out on the 13th Wednesday of this week and I decided to uh, try out a new creation I came across uh, information on. Converting a webcam into a planetary camera, moonshot camera. I'm sure you could probably use this to take pictures of scenery live to your laptop and what I've done is this part right here is the lens that was screwed into it <coughs> well, I had to take this apart and then unscrew this I'm gonna get that in there right had to unscrew this piece off of there and unscrews off it's got a little I don't know if you can see that little reflective part on the back of the lens that's what keeps it from going infrared or at least picking up more red or heat than uh, light blue light and uh, when well you take that off and you just leave this CCD exposed get yourself a piece of aluminum or it can be steel pipe and uh, this is a creative webcam and you take a piece of that make it about an inch a quarter or something in an inch and a quarter in diameter that's what that is inch and a quarter same size as the eyepiece that you use in the telescope and then you take that and you put that into your diagonal on the back of the scope I have a Schmidt Cassegram and uh, well that's what I basically did and then you take this and you plug it into your laptop <coughs> use your camera software and bring down the brightness and all that on it so you can take pictures and you get something like this video I'm getting ready to show here I'll talk through it I put that off to the side and let's see I'm gonna go there right now and here it is a night with Jupiter Wednesday December 13 2012 And this is what it looks like. Uh, I'll go a little faster on this and speed it up. But there's Jupiter. That I was able to do. I didn't do an exact alignment of the telescope, so I had to keep adjusting it. That's basically Jupiter, right there. It doesn't look that great on here. That's just because I'm still working on trying to get the uh, lighting correct any exposure on there. As you see I turn the exposure down on it and the further I seem to turn it down the better you could see the, the main bands on Jupiter. There's the eye right there. And I'm doing little adjustments and stuff. That's why it's wiggling around a little bit. I mean every time you touch the scope it vibrates. So I go there to turn the uh, declination because that's the declination I'm moving there. The right ascension, I got that on a drive. I have a uh, right ascension drive, but I don't have a declination drive. So I end up keeping it right there, but it's, if it's not exactly lined up with the equatorial mount to the North Star, well, the declination will drift, but not as bad as the uh, right ascension would. So basically it's staying in the same spot here. It's just that it's see I did that and you can actually see one of the moons right here of uh, Jupiter when you overexpose Jupiter because the moons are a lot dimmer. Uh, I can't think of which one that is offhand. Your Io or one of the close ones to Jupiter, and they were all off in the line this way. I should have sort of took a vision of that just overexposed it and moved it over so you could see all the moons but I was more interested in trying to get Jupiter focused and all that. It's very hard to do. I'm going to probably need to get a focuser for all this. But as you can see you can just about got a good image of the eye right there. I Then I took the, uh, this is just that camera in the diagonal 
Then I took out the borrow lens, the 2x borrow lens, stuck it in the diagonal, then stuck the camera just into the diagonal or the uh, borrow lens, which doubles the uh, magnification. And this is what you're getting just just with the uh, camera and the telescope. Now, when you do the borrow lens on here, this becomes a little bit more fantastic looking. It gets Oh, about that big. It gets pretty good size. I was amazed. It doubled the size of it and what you're seeing here, which is pretty good size. I mean, you can sit there and watch it, it's, which is weird. You're watching it live on on the screen. There we see Jupiter. If you're wondering why it's got these little dark bands in here, it's because I turned the, the uh, exposure down and as it goes around the dark band gets thicker so it looks like it caves in it's just shadow is all that is along the edges and so it makes it look like this is sticking out and those are sticking in around there but you see as I get the light turned up just a little bit this goes away and it becomes more round it's just the uh, shadowing of the low exposure well there's Jupiter on the 13th. It's at its closest right now. Ah, oh, there it is. That's Jupiter with the 2x borrow lens. As you can see, it was a little bit later and the eye is right here now. I'll get it adjusted up like that. And as I said, these are just shadows created from the low exposure. Actually, it's just round and bright around there. It's just the bands are indented looking because of the low exposure. I was trying to do low exposure to show more detail of the bands and the clouds and all of Jupiter. It wasn't as great as I wanted to do. I'm going to work on a little more. I got time. Jupiter will be around for at least another month or so as good as this. About at least through half of January will be as good as this. See how I, I turned the brightness up and it rounded out? That's what I'm saying. So I turned it back down. So I was doing adjustments on the exposure to see what it would look like under different exposures. Meanwhile, my declination is moving off, and I'm going to have to now I'm going to have to adjust it back up and to get it back in the center of the frame, like that. And there it is again. I said I got a little dark. I guess I could have left it a little brighter, but it kind of dimmed out the brown bands going around there. It's got a little color you can see in it. It's not as gray as it could have been. That's what I'm saying. It's, it could be better. I need to work on using it. It's not the greatest uh, way of doing it, but it does give you a live picture of it. On the moon, it would just be awesome. You'd see craters and everything perfectly on the moon. And uh, on planets, it does this. I was going to try some brighter uh, celestial objects like globular clusters, but I haven't got around to trying that out. See if I can get it to pick up any of the starlight from like the 3.6 magnitude globular clusters. See if I can catch some of the stars in those. But this is what Jupiter is looking like. I mean, this is what astrophotography is all about. I have a lot of it. I like to go out. I probably got a better picture if I'd done still pictures using regular film. I have everything for a regular film. See, I turned the brightness up and see it's actually round. And there's the eye, like I said, right there. <coughs> And you can see a, a band here now since I turned the darkness down a little bit it shows up a little better the eye actually showed up a little better and then as I turn the brightness back up I'm just doing experimentations I hope you enjoyed this this is some work I've been doing to see I'd like to get a real CCD camera but you know the cheapest ones are around a hundred and they're just like this is about their planetaries not very much for deep sky objects the good ones start at 400 and go up to over 
up to two thousand dollars for a camera for your telescope but you're able to do deep space objects with it but with just with the cheap camera I had it was like probably uh, creative was like twenty dollars I bought it several years ago and uh, and then messing you know I said well I got me a HP that's the one I was using that you're seeing me with on here when I go to my cell is the HP camera and it was about forty dollars for it so it's supposed to be a high definition type camera and this here is not too bad I, I'm kind of satisfied I'm going to try it when the moon comes back around it's new moon now and that's it that's all I got for you well, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, until next time it's Spellbinder saying, be good, be good at it. Keep your eye on the sky. Keep an eye out for those meteors. Tonight's the uh, last night of the meteors. Well, not really. It'll be going on for a few more nights, but it'll be one of the last nights where it'll still be around 100 and something meteors an hour after all around 1 a.m. So if you're out anywhere in a clear sky, check it out. You'll probably catch some. Alrighty then. Catch you later and have happy telescoping if you get a chance to over the weekend. Good night.